Really? You're concerned about that now? Y'all ready here? If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, it's just not late enough. Okay. All right, call this meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Vaughn Crooks? Here. Benedetti? Here. Campbell Wadden? Present. Hey. Here. Perugi? Here. Rodriguez? Here. Rizepa? Here. Quorum present, Mayor Rizepa. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Next item we have on the agenda is the minute approval of the May 15th, 2023 public hearing and regular meeting. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you all. All right, uh, we have a couple re or a re one retirement plaque to give out tonight. We also have uh, we're recognizing the retirement of uh, Jeff Malone from the wastewater plant, um, but wasn't able to make it tonight. But Chief Oakley, if you'd like to come on down for us here. So I feel like we get to celebrate you several meetings in a row here, but uh, I just first off wanted to say thank you very much uh, on behalf of not only all of the council administration, all our elected officials, um, but the entire city of Trenton. That uh, I've said it before too, there isn't too many opportunities where people can look back and see the difference that they've made over the course of their careers, knowing that their community um, is a safer place, is a better place, um, and seeing that difference that they got to make every single day. Um, and we know that Trenton's a better place because you've been a part of it, um, not just you know living here, growing up here, um, but your leadership in our department and all you've done um, for the entire community in that capacity. So I know it's been a long 28 years and hopefully uh, much, much longer uh, and prosperous years ahead, but just wanted to say thank you again, Chief. We appreciate it. So. from uh, any scratches here, but if you want to introduce uh, family or say anything here too, I know council will want to shake your hand after as well. Sure. So. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I've got my lo lovely wife, Lynn, here with me. I'd like to pretend that everybody in the back row is here for me, but uh, <laughs> I think we all know that's not the case. Um, you know, I just want to say that it, it really, overall, it, it could be challenging at times during the 28 years, but for the most part, this is just a fantastic community to work in, you know, and uh, the thing I always point to is, is back during the COVID pandemic and after the, after the killing of George Floyd, all the civil unrest and the defund the police movement and all that, we were literally, we were getting donations of food two or three times a week from our residents and uh, residents have just always treated us great and uh, it's, they, they're just a pleasure to work for. So it really was a pleasure and it was a pleasure uh, getting to work with all of you a little more closely. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Chief, again. And, uh, your Mondays seem a little bit more boring, we understand. <laughs> we appreciate it. I know the council want to shake your hands, too. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And you know the drill, we won't make you stay, but. <laughs> wait, wait, Thanks wait. Again, Chief Oakley. <laughs> no, I don't. He stays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless the paycheck keeps coming. But yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, good. 
Uh, well, we're doing, uh, I guess, a little bit out of order than I normally would have, but Chief Hawkins, would you like to come down here? I'll get to do your whole introduction later on, uh, but I uh, want to turn this over to you here. So uh, if we could also make this part of the regular minutes to uh, move, support. Right, moved in support, no further discussion, but Chief Hawkins, take it away. All right, thank you, Mary. Mayor. Um, tonight I have the privilege of doing one of my first things here as Chief, and that's honoring two individuals um, that are being promoted. This is something that we haven't done in the past. It's something we'd like to do in the future and recognize these individuals who've put in the hard work and the dedication to this community and this department. So the first person I'm going to call up was Sergeant Greg Brewster. It is now going to be Lieutenant Greg Brewster. Are you there somewhere, Greg? There he is. Okay. Greg is being promoted from Sergeant to Lieutenant. Lieutenant Brewster began his career with the Trenton Police Department on July 13th of 2011. He's a firearms instructor and an administrator of our in-house Aegis computer system. He served as a field training officer instructing new employees and helped to maintain the integrity of the program and with the new hires. Uh, Lieutenant Brewster, prior coming to Trenton, was enlisted in the United States Navy where he maintained and operated nuclear power systems from 2006 till 2011. He's received department citation, department compliment, and two life-saving awards. So I'd like to congratulate Lieutenant Greg Brewster on his promotion, and he can call up his, his wife, Christy, and his, and his kids, and they can pin on the badge, and uh, we want to thank him again. I promised him he wouldn't have to say anything, so <laughs> that got him here. Oh, man. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. You're good. I call down Deputy Chief Davis, of course. I should have called him down first. First off, a big thank you to Chief Davis, who agreed to stay on um, as Deputy Chief. So I wanted to thank you first and foremost. But um, <laughs> next promotion is going to be for Margaret Stadler, who was corporal, who is now sergeant. If you want to come on down. So Sergeant Stadler began her career with Trenton on July 24, 2013. She's our department lean tack and ensures compliance with all secure information to and from the department. Uh, Sergeant Stadler has also helped run the dispatch center for the last year. Prior to coming to Trenton, Sergeant Stadler also served in the Navy as a master at arms in the Naval Reserves. Sergeant Stadler is also only the third female sergeant in the 86-year history of the Trenton Police Department. Uh, so congratulations to Sergeant Stadler. I think her husband, Scott, is going to come pin the badge on. Also, Sergeant Stadler. They're equal rank at work, at home. I'm not even going to get into it. Oh, boy. So, um, you got those. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to let Sergeant Tyler introduce some of her family that's here today. <laughs> oh, I know she said it, but you know you made it this way, so. I have my dad here. He's retired from Detroit Police Department, and my mom, and then Scott's parents are both here also with our children. One more round of applause for everyone here tonight. That's awesome. All 
All right, now I am being serious about you guys not having to stay. So that's <laughs> all right, very exciting stuff, and glad we got to recognize all the folks here uh, for that. That was very cool. All righty. Um, I don't know if we actually took a vote on the motion uh, for uh, making it part of the regular minutes. So if there's no other discussions, unanimously so ordered. Just want to make sure I clean that up. All right, so next up we have under presentations and proclamations, I think we might have some folks from Pedal Across Lower Michigan, uh, the Palm Bicycle Tour, uh, looking to speak here. Oh, feel free to take the podium, gentlemen. If we get a motion to make Come this part of the regular part. moved and supported, any further discussion? Seeing none. I think uh, we've got, yes, five minute uh, presentation here for, uh, about, from Palm Bicycle Tour about the uh, upcoming event that they're hosting in town. So, gentlemen, feel free to take it away. Thank you. Um, my name is Joe Olasnavich, and uh, I'm with Joel Marchand, and uh, we represent the Pedal Across Lower Michigan. This is the 40th anniversary of doing this ride. Uh, it's a family-oriented bike ride. Uh, we've been up to 700 people doing this ride some years. This year we're at 350, I'm told, at a meeting yesterday. Uh, so we're, we'll have 350 riders. The idea is to promote biking as a family-oriented, safe way of travel and recreation and to see small-town Michigan. Always starts at Lake Michigan, always a different town, uh, and ends up on the other side of the state. And this year is the very first year that we've selected and uh, uh, the city of Trenton, so it's, it's our pleasure to be here. And I want to thank the mayor and the council, and especially Debbie, for setting this up and allowing us to uh, speak here. So the idea is we are going to tell you a little bit about what to expect. Um, it starts on, uh, well, the big thing is on Friday, June 23rd, um, we're going to be bicycling in from Milan and assembling in Elizabeth Park. People will start coming in about 9 o'clock-ish. We, we don't travel in a big group, but everybody's on their own. When we get to, to uh, 11, 11.30, I believe it is, uh, the police department and hopefully the fire department will take a parade from the park uh, with all the riders. Everybody will have their same color shirt on for this year. Um, up to the high school and the community center where they will have their lunch, pack up, and get out of here, um, I believe. Uh, some might stay over and see and partake of uh, the festival that's happening, happening in town. Um, that's, I'm going to pass it over to Joel and let him tell you more about this. All I wanted to add is the fact that he mentioned that it's a family-oriented ride. Um, it's, we've been doing this for 40 years. The youngest person that we've had that actually successfully rode all the way across the, the state was eight years old. And every year, it, it just amazes us. Uh, last year, we had two 80-year-old plus ride across the state. So it's, it's quite a wonderful thing. Every year, the route is different. Uh, the closest we've ever come to here is one year we ended on on Grose Hill at Sacred Heart uh, Church, um, but other we draw people we draw people often from five or six countries and most of the step most of the United States. We have a guy that comes from Hawaii every year, so it's just a a, a fun event, and we're glad to be in Trenton. And we have, bro we have these uh, um, posters that we're going to be going to different uh, businesses in the, in the city to say, put this in your front window to let people know that there's going to be a parade down West Road. And also just to inform them that we might be in Trenton to use their, their business. Awesome. Well, we're very excited to have you guys, and we definitely hope you do quite a bit of that, too. We appreciate <laughs> yeah. I want to add one thing. My daughter, when she was three years old, started this, two years old, uh, 
until she was like 16, did the ride every year, uh, and I've been doing it ever since, over 30 years. This year I won't be on the ride, darn, <laughs> because she's getting married in California, so I have to go, be, go out there. But uh, I do thank you for uh, hosting us this year. Not to want to beat his record, my <laughs> grandson, who is 13, this will be his 14th consecutive year. Oh. The first year he did Palm, his mother was six months pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Awesome. Wow. Well, well, thank you guys for planning this through Trenton. We're excited to have you all. And like you said, uh, hope you stick around and enjoy the festival, all the businesses that, uh, we have to offer and everything uh, that's great about Trenton. So we'll look forward to having you. Thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. Is it possible to put our rides somewhere on the city website? Absolutely, yeah. Just if you want to leave one of those two uh, behind, that yeah, we could definitely do what we can to, to get them posted. We're going to have a parade, and maybe people can come Yep, up. absolutely. We'd love to. Great. Great. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate it. All righty. Next up here, we have public comment regarding the items on today's agenda. If anyone has any comment regarding specifically items on today's agenda, we'll have another opportunity for comment uh, later on in the meeting. Um, for all other uh, opportunities there, ask that anyone wishing to speak begins with their name and address, directs all questions through me, and please limits their comments to five minutes. We'll go to anyone in person first, then those on the Zoom. Um, would ask anyone on the Zoom to please use the raise hand function um, if need be. Not seeing any, we'll keep moving here. Next up, we have uh, under authorities, commissions, boards, and committees, um, resignations from the Historical Commission for Ms. Uh, Janine Finnegan and Linda Murdoch, um, asking this body to receive and place on file the resignations and uh, to request that we send a letter uh, of commendation thanking them for their services. So moved. Uh, it has been moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Now we've got our 33rd District Court. Uh, fines, court costs, and fees for April 2023, and I will go to our delegate, uh, Councilwoman Von Crooks. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve the fines and costs due to the 33rd District Court from our community in the amount of $16,177.57. Support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you, Councilwoman. All right, next up we have uh, three separate block party requests. Um, I will defer to you on this, uh, Madam Clerk, here. Uh, first we have is Mayor, the... Mayor, can we combine them all together? Oh, so to do we that? could do that, yeah, theoretically, um, if that's okay with everyone. We've got the Norwood Drive uh, residents, the Sheraton Drive residents, and Truax Street residents. Um, if you want to read those three, and then we could take a motion. Uh, okay, right. sure. The... <clears throat> Norwood residents are looking to have a black party on Monday, July 3rd from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. And the Sheraton residents are looking for a black party the same day, Monday, July 3rd from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., closing Sheraton Drive. And um, the Truex residents are looking for to have a black party. It's not really a black party, but a graduation party. It only affects two homes. And they're looking to close Truax on Saturday, June 17th from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., but it's only the area that those two homes are on. It's Truax at the um, end of the street at 3rd to the alley between West Jefferson and 3rd Street. <coughs> so moved. Or <clears throat> it's been moved and supported to approve all three block party requests. Are there any further discussions? Councilman Perugia? Yes, is there any issue with the length on the last block party from being 8 a.m. to um, 10 p.m.? Does it create any public safety issues? I know it's a small distance that they're blocking. Is the that street. for the True X one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it would have been signed off at least. Signed, by they have signed off on that, and for the length, I'm okay with it. Cool. It looks like there is some construction on Truax, though, so I'm not sure. There, I saw a giant pile of rubble there, mm -hmm. so I'm not yeah. sure if they're going to get that cleared up for them to even have the party. But I don't have a problem with it. So yeah, hopefully. Just, that's, <clears throat> so. Yeah, they could right. slide down the mountain. <laughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you all. 
Um, and then next from uh, groups and organizations, uh, we also have uh, from Bill Labar, <laughs> Turn the Town Teal. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you wanted to take that one. Sure. Um, Mr. Labar has come before you again um, asking for permission <coughs> associated with Turn the Town Teal for a national campaign to create awareness of ovarian cancer. They're looking to tie ribbons in the city of Trenton for the month of September. Support. Support. Been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you all. <laughs> all right, we'll go to our city administrator for these next three items here. Uh, first up being the travel reimbursement and expense policy. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, you had before you a travel uh, reimbursement and expense policy um, the administration is recommending. Um, in the past, we've had a uh, travel and reimbursement policy that was um, not updated very frequently, and we have the opportunity to just tie our uh, rates in with federal and uh, regulated rates. So what we're asking for is that um, adopt the following policy for travel while in city businesses. City will use the most current per diem rates, meals and lodging, as published by the U.S. General Services Administration for reimbursement plus applicable taxes, resort fees, and miscellaneous fees, except when the traveler stays at the host hotel the department or city administrator may authorize a lodging expense greater than the standard published room rates. Be it further resolved that the city also adopts the IRS federal mileage rates for transportation or travel expenses based on the current published rate. And this will just allow us to not come back on a regular basis asking for minor changes and fluctuations in the um, reimbursement rates. So moved. Support. Support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Next up from the city administrator, expanded social district. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is just an expansion that's going to go continue on West Jefferson from the Walnut intersection. It would actually where Jefferson turns <coughs> west, and it would proceed to the alley so that we can include, which is going to be your next uh, motion, motion or uh, discussion, is... Uh, to include Mamacita's uh, application for social district inclusion. So moved. Support. 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 It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you. And then, as uh, Dean mentioned, next up, social district application for Mamacita's ModMex. Yes, sir. Uh, before you have the social district application from, from JK Blue for LLC doing business as Mamacita's. Um, I can't read the next Mod, word. Modmex. Modmex. Mod <laughs> All right. At 3022 West Jefferson Avenue, everything appears to be in order um, for your approval, and they would they would have to participate with the same rules and regulations along the way that all the other social district participants have agreed to. So moved. Support. Support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you very much, Dean. Yes, sir. All right, next up from our city attorney, we have uh, ordinance number 812, amending, redacting, and adding additional language to the animals ordinance, second reading. Thank you. Uh, this is a move to eliminate section 14-6 key uh, with regard to keeping of the chicken and fowl from a second reading of the <coughs> ordinance at this time and refer the language to the building department and planning commission for review and recommendation within 90 days and to further approve the second reading of the ordinance number 812, amending and redacting and adding these addition, this additional language to the animals ordinance. So moved. Support. Support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you all. Thank you, Alan. All right, next up we have uh, city controller, two items. First up, a revised resolution for budget fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024 on the millage tax rate. Our deputy controller, Ms. Cooper, will be here taking it away. Uh, yes, yeah, so at the last meeting, um, the tax resolution and budget resolutions were approved. Um, after the fact, we came across two small changes. Um, the the individual millages did not equal the due to rounding. It was off 0 .0001 um, that got added into the um, uh, municipal operations. So very small. Um, and then there was one parcel that was 
recorded incorrectly that was listed as an IFT parcel um, should be should have been an ad valorem. So it was a small taxable value, twelve thousand, just over twelve thousand, that got added to ad valorem. So there are no longer um, any IFT parcels. Um, so we just look to approve those changes. So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you, Jill. And then next up, we have for you the capital improvement bond award bid and accept terms. Yep, we're just looking to um, award the 2023 capital improvement bond, bond to um, the lowest bidder, uh, which was um, Flagstar's municipal bond business, who's through Signature Public Funding Corp. So moved. Four. It's been moved. Oh, I can see. Moved and supported. Uh, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Right, thank you. I totally sitting there. Okay. Blended in. That's good. All right, next up we have uh, two items from our DPS director. Uh, Mr. Sargent, first up here, awarded the contract for ADA ramp construction along West Jefferson between Truex and 4th Street. <clears throat> Thanks, Mayor. On March 20th, 2023, this body authorized the preparation of plans details, specs, bidding documents, and the solicitation of bids for the ADA ramp upgrades on West Jefferson Avenue between Truex and 4th Streets. On April 18th, 2023, the city received four bids on the project. Based on our city engineer's review, they found that Century Cement Company submitted the lowest responsible and responsive bid. Therefore, we recommend awarding the ADA ramp upgrades contract to Century Cement Company for a contract price of $257,246.25. Funds are available in the DDA maintenance account. So moved. Support. Support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you. And then next up uh, from Kevin here, we have the uh, awarding of the contract for the demolition of the water pumping station at 121 King Road. On March 6, 2023, this body authorized the solicitation of bids for the demolition of our vacant water filtration plant located at 121 King Road. On May 9th, bids were received and reviewed by the city engineer, Charles Rains Company. Based on the five bids that were received, VinCon submitted the lowest bid. After a pre-award discussion, reference checks, and their experience with demolition on municipal projects, we find that VinCon submitted the lowest responsible and responsive bid. Therefore, we recommend awarding this demolition contract to VinCon for the contract price of $170,040. Partial funding will be from a Wayne County Land Bank grant, and the balance will be budgeted, was budgeted in the Water Fund Building Maintenance Account. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you, Thank Kevin. You. I just, for anyone watching at home, just want to uh, make mention, too, that not to startle anyone, that is not our, our wastewater treatment plant or anything like that. I'd been asked that question before. It's a, an obsolete building that most folks probably don't know is there uh, off King Road. Um, next up, uh, we have from our police chief, uh, Chief Hawkins, uh, 2023 to 2025 school resource officer agreement uh, by and between the Trenton Public Schools and the city of Trenton. Away, Chief. Thank you, Mayor and Council. In front of you uh, is the 2023 to 2025 school resource agreement uh, between City of Trenton and Trent Public Schools regarding the assignment of a police officer to the schools as a school resource officer. The three-year agreement has been approved by the school district and by our legal counsel. There are minor language changes, but essentially the agreement is unchanged from previous years. I'm asking your support for this agreement. So moved. So moved. Support. Or moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Oh, did you have a hand? It's fine. I can ask later. Okay. <laughs> it's unanimously so ordered. All Thanks, right. Chief. All righty. Um, next up uh, from our, our wastewater treatment plant, superintendent isn't able to make it on, so we'll have our administrator, uh, Dean Creech, take this one. Uh, clean up and disposal of hazardous lime materials. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. This is a, a contract that we had to invoke um, uh, the wastewater treatment plant uses pelletized lime in one-ton bulk bags to, con to condition the sewage sludge for landfill acceptance. This had to do with the output we had exceeded smell standard, basically, is, is what it comes down to. Um, the total cost was $6,475.53. Um, ask that you authorize payment to Marine Pollution Control in the amount of $6,475.53 for the cleanup and disposal services already provided to wastewater treatment. So moved. Support. 
It's been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> then we got uh, this last one for you here, uh, agenda item. Yeah, I would request that uh, uh, council adjourn um, recess. recess, I'm sorry, into a closed session to discuss litigation and contract negotiations, and then we can return back to open session. So support. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Okay. Benedetti? Yes. Kiba Watton? Yes. Pate? Yes. Perugi? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Rosepa? Yes. Von Crooks? Yes. Motion carries, Mayor Rosepa. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you all. So we will take a recess to go into closed session and then we will reconvene uh, hopefully shortly. <laughs>
Yeah, there yep. we go. It's right there. Okay. Jeez. Myself, so we will uh, reconvene at 8.34 p.m. All right, I will kick it over to our city administrator for two late items here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as council and yourself are aware, we have been in uh, labor negotiations with uh, city bargaining units, and we've reached tentative agreement with uh, Trenton Firefighters Union Local 2701. You have before you the basic framework, which I'll quickly review. Uh, contract agreement would be for three years, effective July 1st, 2023. Wage adjustments would be annually at 3%. Vacation time, there is an adjustment for the one to four uh, seniority, seven days. Uh, five to 10 year is nine days. 11 to 15 is 11 days. 16 plus would be 13 days. That's a slight increase over um, what, they, what they had previously. It brings them more in line with uh, other bargaining units. Clothing allowance increase of $200 to $800. Um, wages, um, Article 11 would be up to two years of lateral pay per, for previous full-time fire experience, which is the same language as the police have from their last contract. Mm -hmm. Um, pension changes um, would be, and these would be effective July of 2024. The multiplier would go to 2.5. Age 50 retirement with 20 years. Retiree health care would remain at age 55. Uh, cost neutral drop plan, which I have explained previously, deferred retirement option plan. Um, the actual benefits and everything of it are yet to be determined. It's just a goal to be uh, cost neutral. The firefighters contribution would increase from six to 7.5%. The cap on the pension would be reduced from 80 to 75%. And they are accepting of an eight year moratorium on further pension changes. The, uh, the other items are um, changing some insurance benefit uh, language and I also attached a number of um, non-economic issues that you can review at your leisure um, they were all proposed by the city and agreed to um, by the bargaining unit so <coughs> uh, move to or, uh, or ask council to approval of the proposed settlement and authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign the finalized agreement. So moved. moved. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. And we'll go to the <coughs> other late item. All right, before you um, is a mm. contract. Um, there's, th so, all right. So there's three quotes contained in your packet. This is relative to the Riverside property. Um, for companies to come in and finish the demolition of Riverside Hospital. This is all court supervised. We have a court receiver that is overseeing all of these items, but for us to be able to utilize uh, grant funding to move the project along, we need this honorable body's uh, approval. The uh, first couple things to note, this is an emergency motion um, because of the uh, safety nature, safety, and uh, the health and safety issues along with the uh, demolition order that's on the building. Uh, I feel clearly this meets the uh, issuance of uh, it being an emergency motion. Um, we, the people were able to <laughs> obtain three quotes. Um, normally we would go with simply the low bid. However, in this case, um, the second lowest bid um, is requested <coughs> it is more complete um, provides a broader range of of remedies and addresses all the issues they can also start quicker 
um, and uh, we will get into the vetting and stuff at, at a very near future or whatever, but um, they, they submitted the most complete and um, project that was recommended by uh, PCS services. The other component of this is th these contracts will only be approved with the court receiver um, giving the approval. Um, they'll also be doing some of the vetting and reference checking and review. So uh, what I'm asking for is motion to approve the emergency approval of the quote provided by HMC LLC in the amount of $1,525,600 plus necessary permits and mobilizations, mobilization fees as approved by the court receiver for completion of the demolition of Riverside Hospital site. And be it further resolved that this approval is contingent upon the court appointed receiver's approval, vetting, reference checking, and review. So moved. Support. Support. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? And uh, so just to, again, summarize a little for those uh, folks watching at home, um, <coughs> no, we are not spending any city money on this whatsoever. Um, that money um, was from Wayne County as part of uh, a grant we were able to receive um, coupled with money that has been uh, being put into an escrow account <coughs> overseen by the court-appointed receiver. So uh, we are just concurring, frankly, with the uh, receiver's decision um, and hopefully we'll be getting uh, the demolition of Riverside Hospital back on track in the coming weeks here um, with this authorization. Uh, so seeing no further discussion, it is unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, we have our disbursements and statements and then our reports. I uh, will defer to our Mayor Pro Tem Councilwoman Pate. Thank you so much. I'd like to move to approve the authorized disbursements dated June 5th, 2023 in the amount of 920000 Seven hundred sixty dollars and sixty-four cents. Support moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. I'd also like to move to approve the City Beautiful Commission minutes of March first, twenty twenty-three. The Planning Commission minutes, February 9th, twenty twenty-two. February twenty-third, twenty twenty-two. March 9th, twenty twenty-two. March twenty-third, twenty twenty-two. April twenty-seventh, twenty twenty-two. July thirteenth, twenty twenty-two. August twenty-fourth of twenty-two. September 14th of 2022, December 14th, 2022, March 22nd of 2023. Support. Wait, I've got a few more to go. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Unless you don't want me to read them all. No, let's, no, please do. Okay, the Traffic Safety Commission minutes of January 4th, 2023, and the Zoning Board Public Hearing and Regular Minutes, February 17th, 2022, June 23rd, 2022, July 14th, 2022, August 24th, 2022, September 15th of 22, October 6th of 2022. Now I am complete. Support. Support. All right, moved and supported. Any further discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you very much, Mayor Pro Tem. You're welcome. All right, we'll go to other council business now. Um, I will be very brief. I first off wanted to thank um, both the Civic Commission um, and really everyone who came out to our Memorial Day parade uh, just a week and a half ago or so. Uh, there was a ton of people out watching the parade, um, which I felt like even more so than normal. We obviously had great weather for it, um, but it was just a really exciting thing to see, um, along with all those that stuck around for the ceremony after the fact. So it um, was a, a, great, uh, a great event for sure, a great way to honor what the holiday is all about. Um, and really just want to thank everyone for all the, uh, the effort that goes into something like that as well. So for those that uh, have, weren't able to make it, definitely encourage doing so next year. Um, outside of that, the only other thing, uh, as I'd mentioned, kind of going uh, a little bit out of order here, wanted to congratulate uh, our new Trenton Police Chief, Mike Hawkins, um, on accepting this role here for the community. Uh, Mike has, uh, has been with the department for almost uh, 22 years, including his last five as lieutenant, or six, five, uh, five, six here. So certainly a familiar face around, um, but uh, we're very excited for the continued successes uh, of our department under his leadership. Um, and uh, all the promise ahead for the men and women over there. So other than that, um, I don't have anything further tonight, so we'll go to the rest of council, um, and we'll start with Councilman Benedetti tonight. Well, first off, congratulations. Oops, sorry. First off, congratulations to uh, Mike for the new police chief position. I'm sure you'll do a fine job with that. Um, part of it showed tonight when you recognize your officers, and I think that's great that you do that. Second, I'd like to congratulate uh, all the new graduates from Trenton High from last week. I don't have one yet, another seven years. But it uh, looks like everybody had fun. And that's it. Great. Thank you very much, Councilman. 
Uh, Councilwoman Pate. Thank you very much. I'd also like to extend my congratulations to Chief Hawkins and um, also to the people who were promoted and recognized today. Um, I'd like to recognize the people the, in the Cultural Commission who put on the um, third Pride um, celebration. It was well attended again, <coughs> inspiring speeches, uh, lots of um, uplifting words to the community and uh, great people that attended. So thank you for all the people who put that on. Um, you'll notice a lot of the flowers downtown, and I believe um, I have to I have to drive a little slower maybe when I'm going down West Road and pay attention. I was at graduation, so my nerves were up, but um, I think they put some flowers in on West Road too this year. So you know, there's new hanging baskets, there's new baskets on the on the ground by the benches, there's some up by the West Road businesses. So they're really working hard to expand, uh, making the city look more beautiful. And they've I think they're planting again. So maybe the pots are there, they're planting, but there's there's more to come. They're, they're very busy. Um, my son did graduate uh, from Trenton High School this week. It was a wonderful ceremony. And he also was at a rotary function today. And, you know, they do a lot for the kids. Um, most of the scholarships come from our local community. He applied for many in, you know, nationwide, statewide, whatever, but... Um, the majority of the scholarship awards were from Trenton, and the, the list of businesses that had donated um, are all businesses that I've been to that we all shop at frequently. Uh, there's so many to name, um, so I just want to, in general, thank all the businesses for donating and supporting uh, the kids and all the things that um, they support, um, also uh, with you know things we do around town. They're very, very, our businesses are very generous, and I just want to thank them for that. Um, and I believe that might be it tonight. Um, so I'll pass it on. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Perugia. I have nothing, Mayor. Alrighty. Councilman Cabawan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I'd like to echo some of the comments. Um, thank you to the Civic Commission for um, putting on a great uh, parade um, recently. That was a, It was an honor to be in it. So thank you very much for the invite. And I had a, I had a blast. Um, Mike. Chief Hawkins, congratulations again on uh, your promotion. Uh, I'm sure you'll do, I know you'll do great. So um, look forward to working with you. And uh, again, congratulations to all the officers and uh, um, that uh, received promotions tonight. Um, also um, wanted, to <clears throat> wanted to make a note that uh, on a Wayne County side, um, there is a household hazardous waste collection on Saturday, June 17th from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. Um, so that is, uh, it's honestly, it's a great event for, um, for people to get rid of um, hazardous waste. You know, the paints, the, you know, chemicals, the uh, old uh, fertilizers and things in your garage that you don't use. So um, take advantage of that. Uh, that is, uh, again, uh, June, June 17th. Um, from 8 to 1 p.m., and that's at Henry Ford Community College in in Dearborn. Um, another item going on this weekend on the 10th at 11 a.m., um, Wayne County is going to have a fishing funder uh, day um, at 11 a.m. over at the um, International Wildlife Refuge. So um, if you're around and you have, I think it's more designed for small, small kids, but uh, if you're into fishing and want to check it out, that would be a pretty cool thing to do. Um, other than that, I think that's all I have for uh, everybody tonight. Good. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Rodriguez? Yes, I would like to first say congratulations to uh, our new chief, Mike Hawkins. Looking forward to see what you and Deputy Chief Davis will be doing. And I'd also like to congratulate um, the other officers that were here this evening that got their promotions. I'd like to congratulate the Trenton High School seniors on their graduation. Uh, I missed the festivities this weekend in regards to uh, the, the parade, so hopefully I won't miss that one next year. And that's all I have. Great. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Bond Crux. Um, <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, and I know when you're last to speak, but I've known uh, Mike Hawkins for many, many years, and uh, your father also worked for the city, and you guys have always put your heart and soul into the community. And uh, I'd like to really congratulate you on the new chief. and. Of course, say thank you to uh, Chief Oakley, who just left. I didn't get to say it while he was here, but uh, he's also done a great job for the community. Um, and to uh, 
Deputy Chief Davis, thanks for staying on, and you do a good job. You represent the guys real well, so the girls, so thank you. Um, been getting a lot of phone calls in the last couple of weeks on some things going on around town. Um, it's that time of year where all of everybody's getting their motorhomes and their boats and everything ready, and it's nice to have all our outdoor activities. But at the same time, we need to remember there is an ordinance about how long you can leave a motorhome in your driveway or a boat or where you can store it if it is in your driveways or <coughs> in your home. Um, some of the residents don't mind it, and some residents don't want all uh, these RVs parked there all summer or boats that you know, make the city look uh, cluttered with all this stuff. So just be mindful, I think, to the residents of the ordinance. And uh, I think it's 72 hours. You can clean and do whatever with your motor home, and then you have to take it out. So um, I just wanted to, I've been getting calls on it already. I've been getting calls on uh, this week about grass, um, people letting their grass grow two feet high and thinking that the neighbors don't mind. Well, I guess there's some neighbors around town there's a house, uh, there's one on Grange, there's one in Vernon, there's houses that are not being kept up. And it's not fair to your neighbors to have to come home and look at that every night. So I think we need to be mindful that we do live in a small community, houses are on top of each other, and uh, we like to have respect for our neighbors. So that's another thing. Fire pits at this time, another thing for uh, breathing problems for neighbors and stuff. So, there's some things that we still have to be mindful of at this time of year. Um, and then the ultimate thing on the chicken coops. I've gotten quite a few calls about these chicken coops that uh, we voted against that many years ago, four or five years ago. And uh, I've had residents worried about their neighbors putting chicken, could they be allowed to put chicken coops in there, you know, with their neighbors uh, next doors. And th there's a lot of residents that do not want that. So I want to be mindful of what if we allowed every resident to have a chicken coop in their backyard? I mean, this is stuff that we got to be careful about. So I know we're referring it to the Planning Commission, but it was voted down a what, long time ago. And uh, I think people move to Trenton and don't expect that that's going to be allowed if they buy a home in Trenton that their neighbors could have chicken coops. It's never been allowed. And you buy a house here under that auspice. So. Um, just be mindful of that before that goes to the Planning Commission. I just want to bring it up because I'm getting calls from the last meetings that we've had. So um, that's really all I have tonight. And uh, thank you, too, also to the Civic Commission and everything that uh, all our volunteers do in the community. I mean, every, every year, you know, we're so proud to say we, we're from Trenton and we live here and work here. And, we, you know, we have a great community. So I just want to thank all the workers and the volunteers. And that's basically all I have tonight. Thank awesome. you. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. Yes, those are good reminders and certainly don't have our uh, any problems putting our ordinance officers to work on those types of things, too. Got to make sure things right. are right. clean and safe for everyone. Um, all right, so we'll go to our other elected officials now. Uh, Madam Clerk, do you have anything tonight? Um, I'll just mention... Oops, there we go. Just mention that our next regular council meeting will be on Tuesday, June 20th at 7 p.m. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I know our uh, assessor was unable to be here this evening. Uh, Madam Deputy Treasurer, do you have anything? All right, nothing from the Treasurer's office either. We'll go to our department heads. Any of our department heads wishing to speak? Take it away. We've got Chief Hawkins coming up. Well, I'm never at a loss for words. So uh, first off, with all the words there, I want to say thank you to the mayor, the council, uh, city Administrator and our Human Resource Director for giving me the opportunity. Uh, again, officially uh, thank Deputy Chief uh, Jake Davis for staying on, uh, making this transition very smooth. Um, uh, last week we had our Police Memorial Mass that was organized by Lieutenant Greeno. It was well attended. Um, it was at St. Paul. Next year we're going to send out personal invites and, and try and get even more attendance to members of the city. Um, as we saw today, there's going to be many changes and many different things that we see in the department highlighting the good things that we do, uh, including monthly reports to council are going to be, uh, have much more information to keep you apprised of the good work that our men and women are doing. Um, there's a lot of good work to do and we're just getting started, so I want to thank you again for the opportunity. And, and as Councilman Von Crook said, if there are parking issues, complaints, Lieutenant Greeno took over as the operations lieutenant and in charge of traffic 
no need to bother people. Funnel them to the police department. We will take care of those. Um, any of the 48-hour or 72-hour ordinances, you can give us a call. But thank you, and if there's anything we can do, just let us know. Great. Thank you very much, Chief. We appreciate it. Right. Any of other department heads? Tim, don't know if you got anything unmuted. Feel free. Whoever holds your peace. If not, we'll go to public comment. Anyone from the public wishing to speak, I ask that you begin with your name and address. Please direct all questions through me, the chair, and please limit your comments to five minutes. Anyone in person first, then those on the Zoom. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Four. Moved and supported uh, for adjournment at 8.54 p.m. Let's see if somebody, there's a guy here who asked, where's public?